you might have considered uh, getting a solar generator before, but um, it can kind of be overwhelming. Um, so that's what this video is about. I'm here today to help you, to help the layperson, if you are in the market for a solar generator, to help you understand what you need to know, uh, how you can figure out what to get, um, so where you can make informed decisions. And, uh, and I, I ran a, an electrical contracting business, so I, I'm well schooled in electricity and I understand it pretty doggone well. And well, good morning, folks. Welcome back to the channel. And if, if you're uh, new to the channel, welcome if it's your first time here. Well, folks, uh, we're going to get a little bit more technical today than what Mr. E's been doing. If you like me, uh, you kind of want to be prepared for things. And, 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 you know, if you a prepper or a homeowner or a homesteader, almost everybody wants to be prepared if the electricity goes out, um, even if it just goes out for a little while. And there's all kind of ways to do that. Um, but one way to do it is with a solar generator where you can diversify, where you, you don't have to have a gas generator. Um, but uh, so if, if you like me, other preppers, homesteaders, you, you might have considered uh, getting a solar generator before, but um, it can kind of be overwhelming to know uh, what to get, what you need and what you can run with it. So, um, you know, even me, when I decided I wanted to get a solar generator, it was a little bit overwhelming and kind of daunting. And and I I, I was uh, I studied electronics in the Marine Corps. I was an electronics uh, repairman. Um, I was a, an electrical instructor at a technical college for years, and uh, and I, I ran a, an electrical contracting business. So I, I'm well schooled in electricity, and I understand it pretty doggone well. And it was still hard for me to figure out what I needed and what I could run with these solar generators. Um, so that's what this video is about. I'm here today to help you, to help the layperson, if you are in the market for a solar generator, to help you understand what you need to know, uh, how you can figure out what to get, um, so where you can make informed decisions on, on what kind of a, a solar generator you want to get and, and what you can run with it. Um, I'm going to make it as simple as possible. It's not going to be hard. And um, I'm going to share with you my knowledge to help you make that decision and take the mystery out of it. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to show you how you can figure out what's the best solar generator, uh, th the size that you need, what you need to get, how you can figure out how to do it. And uh, yes, we're going to answer that question. That's what almost everybody wants to know. Can I run my refrigerator with a solar generator. Stick with me. Mr. E explains what you need to know in this video. Uh, stick with me toward the end of the video. I'm going to show you why or tell, explain to you why I decided to build one so you, you can buy them and you can build them. Um, and I'll show you why I built it and why I built it the way I did. I'll explain that to you. So stick with me. We're going to answer your questions in this video. And when we come back, Mr. E is going to have his, he's going to take his regular hat off and he's going to put his professional hat on y'all stick with me we're going to help y'all out so uh before we get started i just want to remind everybody i'm going to give y'all the basic things that you need to know to, to help you make the wisest decision so you can be informed and, and and make this real simple for you so i'm going to take the mystery out of what a solar generator is it sounds like it's some big technical thing and it's not bad, folks. We're gonna make this simple. Trust me. Most of you familiar with with uh, um, a self-contained camper? Uh, they have a battery system on them, a battery backup system, and you you go somewhere with your camper, and you you plug that thing in, and you have a battery charger on there that charges a battery that then gives power to an inverter, and that inverter gives power to your receptacles, if you want to call it that, to your to your regular uh, power supply like you have at your house. So that inverter is going to convert power from the battery into power that you can plug your appliances in. Okay, so it's as simple as that. But what happens is if you have a solar generator, the battery charger is no longer um, something that you just you know, like you have a battery charger, you hook to a battery and you truck and charge it into a plug it into a wall outlet. 
with a solar generator, here's what you got. A solar generator is everything that a, that a, that a self-contained camper has except your battery charger that you have on a camper, a typical 120 volt electrical battery charger, is the, the solar panel and, and a charge controller is gonna take the place of your battery charger. So it's, it's not real hard, we're just gonna take the mystery out of it. You're gonna have a battery system. In our little simple case, we're gonna use a 12 volt battery. We're gonna use easy numbers on this, folks. And we're gonna to explain to you how it works with simple, easy numbers and uh, try to make this as simple as possible. So just like in a, in a camper, you're going to have a battery system, you're going to have an inverter, and eventually you're going to be able to, you're going to have access to a receptacle where you can plug in your appliances for 120 volt appliances. That's what happens in a camper. In the case of a solar charger, or I'm sorry, a solar generator, a typical charge battery charger is going to be replaced by a solar panel and a charge controller. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the solar panel later and the charge controller. But what we're going to focus on, and it's, that's not going to be hard. Just think of that as your battery charger. But what we're going to focus on so that you can understand what can I run with a solar generator? Do I need one? Do I want one? Should I get one? And what should I get? We're going to focus on the battery and the power from that battery that goes into the inverter and comes out where you can charge uh plug your appliances in i want y'all to if you don't hear nothing else on this video keep that in mind this battery power how much how much power and later we're going to call that amp hours don't worry you don't have to remember all of this stuff we're going to tie it all up after a while the important thing that you're going to need to know if you decide to buy a solar generator is what kind of power pack do I have? That's your battery. And how, how many amp hours it's gonna have, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. So you got a solar panel, a charge controller, the panel takes energy from the sun, it's gonna, the charge controller, this is where the energy is gonna come from to charge your battery. The charge controller is gonna regulate the voltage and current coming from the solar panel and it's going to charge that battery, and that battery is going to convert DC power through that inverter. That's all technical. That's, a, that's another class. It's going to convert that to AC power that you can use with your wall socket. Okay? So we're going to get a little bit more technical and throw you some easy numbers uh, that you can look at. And it's, it's going to, everything's going to, it's kind of like dumping out a puzzle, people. We're kind of dumping out a little puzzle, the little solar generator puzzle. And... We, we turn in the pieces over of that puzzle right now, and we're going to put all, and, and you're like, oh, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on, and I don't know what the puzzle even looks like. We're going to turn these pieces of the puzzle over for you. We're going to put them together, and you'll see a nice pretty picture at the end of this video. won't take us long. It's not going to be hard. We're going to keep it simple. So we're going to come back for the next step. Y'all stay with me now. Don't, don't get scared. Y'all don't get scared. Tell yourself, Mr. E is going to make this real easy and it ain't going to be hard. Y'all don't get scared. I'm going to make this simple. Y'all starting to see a little bit of technical stuff. But remember what I said about the puzzle. In the end, you're not going to have to remember all this, but I got to lay the foundation and you're going to see a few things that's going to stick out. And I'll, I'll, I'll um, reinforce that in your minds for you so that you'll be able to know what to do when you're considering buying a, a, a solar generator. So don't get scared of these numbers and all these things I'm about to say. Just just stay with me. I'm gonna try to slow down, y'all. I get I get almost excited about electrical stuff and teaching and showing somebody what goes on with electricity. Almost as excited as I do about fishing. It's pretty close. So y'all stay with me. This is not gonna be hard. I promise you. I just gotta lay the foundation for you. Watch this. All right. We showed you a while ago. We talked about. Um, it's just like a camper. You just have a, a solar panel and a charge controller that's going to take care of charging your battery. That's going to be input power to the inverter, and the inverter is going to have output power for your receptacle, for your 120-volt receptacle, 
110, 120, 125, that's going to be all the same for your house that you can charge your appliances in, okay? So we're converting DC power to AC power. That's the important thing that you need to know right now. So I, I want you all to take a look at what I got here. Don't be afraid, Mr. E's going to help you. Power is equal to your voltage times your current, okay? There's some other technical things with that, but that's, that's, that's your basic Ohm's law for power. We can get real, real technical with AC versus DC, but, but that's another class. That's what you need to know for this class. Power is equal to voltage times current. Ohm's law calls that P equals E times I, where E is electromotive force, and I is the intensity of current flow. But power is measured in what? The electromotive force, that's what the E is for, voltage is measured in volts, and the intensity of current flow is measured in amps. So you're going to get power measured in watts, the unit of measure is watts, voltage, the unit of measure is volts, current, the unit of measure is amps, and if you take your volts times your amps, that's going to equal, equal your power. All right, now having said that, we all know a typical DC battery, 12 volts, like you use in your car, or like I got with these, with these uh, solar generators, they have 12 volts. We know that our wall receptacle in our house, the standard voltage is 120 volts. Some people call that 110, 120, 125, that's all the same. It's just a difference between the DC power going into this inverter, 12 volts for our example today, because you can have, folks, you can have solar generators and campers with 24 volts, 36 volts, but that's irrelevant for what our, for what our lesson is for today. Y'all bear with me. 12 volts into the inverter is going to give us 120 volts out. And you say, wow, how in the world is that going to happen? Well, that's another class too. But here's the key part that we need to remember. In a, in, a, in a perfect world, the power that we put into the inverter is going to equal the power that we get out of the inverter. Now, we know we live in an imperfect world, so power in is the power that comes out of that inverter or out of a transformer, for that matter, is not going to be 100% of what we put in. You know, in a perfect world, you put in, you get 100% out. But for our purposes today, we'll consider or we'll assume that what we put in is what we get out. It'll always be a little less, folks, but don't get bogged down in the details. Stay with me. We're getting somewhere. So we got 12 volts from a battery goes into the inverter. Voltage don't move, y'all. The current does. That's okay. 12 volts in, 120 volts out. How is that going to happen? All right. That's going to be the next step. We're going to put our power from the battery into the inverter and get power 12 volts in and get 120 volts out stay with me we're going to the next step now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of what we 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 need to know y'all y'all stay with me it's not gonna be hard we're gonna make it simple all right if we have a battery that puts out 100 amps how much power does it did it use rewind this video if you need to but keep in mind that power measured in watts for our purposes it's going to equal volts times amps. So if you have a 12 volt battery times 100 amps, if that battery put out or, or, or you had it hooked to something that drew 100 amps, it took 12 volts to push that current, 12 volts, that current of 100 amps, 12 volts times 100 amps means that battery, it put out 1200 watts of power. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's going to be real, real important in what you need to know about these solar generators so that you can make that informed decision. Very, very important. So keep that in mind. Now watch this. We're getting somewhere, folks. This is, this is important. If this thing will cooperate with me. All right. I hope you all can see that real good. I believe you can. Okay. We're going to 
take a look at DC power versus AC power. And I'm telling you that for a reason. Remember, you don't have to, you don't have to understand every detail. We still turning over pieces of that puzzle. You're going to see the big picture in a little while. Trust me. DC power, that's your battery, versus AC power, that's what you plug in your appliances in, that refrigerator that we want to know about. All right, using that example a while ago with, with, the, with the battery, or, or, or the same idea with a battery putting out power because it's hooked up to something. If you have a 12-volt DC battery that's hooked up to a 100-watt light bulb, you run your wires and you hook it up to an incandescent light bulb, then how much current is going to be drawn from that battery? This is the key to everything. That's what this video is all about. Your battery power that's going to power up that solar generator. 12-volt DC source hooked up to a 100-watt light bulb. If power is equal to volts times amps, and you know you got 12 volts, and, and that light bulb is going to use 100 watts, if you're like me, you forgot how to do math, forgot how to add and subtract, you might have to use a calculator. You know, as we get older, we, we forget how to do half that, especially with these smartphones. But do the math. Mr. E did it for you, trust me. If that 12-volt battery is hooked to that 100-watt light bulb, that DC source, that 12-volt battery is going to draw 8.33 amps to put out that 100 watts. We're getting somewhere, y'all. We're putting those pieces of the puzzle together, and you're going to start seeing a picture here in just a little bit. If I took that same 100-watt light bulb, and I hooked it, don't do this at home unless you know what you're doing, but if you hooked it, if you plugged a wire into the wall socket and you hooked it to that 100-amp light bulb, which is nothing more than what, I mean, you turn on your switch and turn your, your light on if you had a 100-watt light bulb. But if I took that same 100-watt light bulb, that we hooked to a 12 volt DC source and and it put out 8.33 amps from that battery and I put that same bulb to a 120 volt source take a wire from or, or plug that light into your wall socket a 120 volts that same 100 watt light bulb is going to put out 100 watts do the math then this 120 volt AC source coming from your power company in this case, that same bulb is going to draw 0.833 amps. So with DC power, you got lower voltage, but it's going to push a higher current through that bulb to get 100 watts. And with, with AC, it, it's a higher voltage, but the current is lower to get that same 100 watts. That's the, one of the biggest keys to this whole video. If you don't understand any of it yet, just believe Mr. E, Mr. E that the power into this inverter coming from your battery is going to, in a, in a like I said earlier, in a perfect world, is going to equal the power coming out. So if you had an appliance that pulled 100 watts and you have it hooked to your solar generator, that battery has to put out 100 watts. To, so you got to put in 100 watts to get out 100 watts. But watch, the battery to get 100 watts out has to push 8.33 amps. But if we was hooked to a 120 volt source, that 120 volt source would push 0.833 amps. So the solar source, the DC battery, takes 10 times the amount of current to produce the, the higher voltage, and then the current drops down on the other side of that inverter. Um, and we're going to simplify that in a minute. We're going to go to the next step. Y'all hang on. We're getting down to the meat and the, and the potatoes with it. Um, using everything we learned so far, I need you to remember, the power that goes into the inverter is going to be equal to the power that comes out of the inverter. Okay? So if we have an appliance that pulls 10 amps of current and remember then we plug that into our outlet on our inverter in, in our camper in our house then we have 120 volts that's going to be applied to that appliance and so if it pulls 10 amps 
and volts times amps is equal to power in watts, then that appliance is pulling 1200 watts. And if we're using a solar generator, an inverter, then the DC source that's powering that inverter, in order for it to put out 1200 watts, 12 volts times 100 amps, that battery would have to push 1200 amps, we call that. That would be, a, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. That battery would have to push 100 amps to get 1200 watts of power produced. So that's the key. That's what we want to think about. What can my battery put out? What can what what is my solar generator able to do? What kind of power pack does it have? What kind of battery do I have? So again, 12 volts times 100 amps would equal the 1200 watts on the battery side of the inverter that you need to get the 1200 watts out on the appliance side of the inverter. In our example, we'll use a typical refrigerator. A typical refrigerator, everybody, you can go look on the nameplate. They're usually inside the door. Any appliance, though, you, they usually have a nameplate on them. You can find out how much the current draw is or the amps. That's what you need to know, the amps. So if a refrigerator pulls 10 amps, it's going to use 1,200 watts of power. So in order to have a solar generator that's going to put out 1200 watts of power you need to have a battery source that could put out 1200 watts of power or that could push 100 amps because 12 volts times 100 amps would give you that 1200 watts of power so if you had a refrigerator like i said a typical refrigerator you can go look it's five to to ten amps um, usually it's, it's, it's four to six, but I mean, there's bigger refrigerators. I think some of these smaller refrigerators, some of these, uh, small li little ones, uh, just to pull a couple of amps. So you keep all that in mind when you de decide what kind of solar generator you're going to get. Um, so if you had, if, if a refrigerator pulled 10 amps, 1200 Watts of power, if it pulls five amps, that's going to be half the power. It'd be 600 Watts of power. So keep all of that in mind. That's the nitty gritty. That's what we need to know. And so that's the main thing I want you to focus on right now, folks. Look at your, decide what you want to run with this solar generator. Find out how much current it pulls. And then whatever solar generator you decide to get, make sure that the power pack, the battery, can handle that based on all this information that I gave you. So that's that's a key key thing and now the next step is i'm going to show you how to determine and and we're going to wrap it up the picture will come become clear i'm going to show you how to determine what your battery can power now we we didn't cover all kind of technical details but that's the main thing i mean we can't learn it all in one video but i'm going to show you what your battery can power and that you got to keep this in mind folks that's going to be determined by amp hours in other words how long can my battery push 100 amps to get 1200 watts you see that's a big factor a lot of times you'll look um or, or you you'll have an advertisement maybe um and i haven't used any of these compact solar generators um i'll tell you a little bit more why later I, I, i'm telling you right now if you get a good name brand they're probably fine but a lot of times you'll see advertisements that'll tell you, um, you know, you can run your whole house, you can run your refrigerator or whatever, and, and they're not lying to you. you. You can run your refrigerator, but how long can you run it? In other words, if you buy, if you didn't do your research and you buy a solar generator that can only run your refrigerator for an hour, then how much good is that doing you, you know, um, if you can only run it for an hour and then you have to, recharge your battery because what happens when you when you use a battery's capacity it's amp hour capacity and that's the key to this video you need to know your amp hour capacity of your battery if you hook it up to, to an appliance let's say a refrigerator and you drain all that capacity from that battery 
it has to be recharged. And it may take a day or two days to recharge it. And so if you bought a solar generator with a battery capacity that has a a, a capacity on it that that or you bought a, 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 a generator with a battery capacity, a solar generator with a battery capacity that um, you that is used up when you hook your refrigerator to it and, it and it is used up in one hour and it takes two days to recharge your, your battery or your solar generator, then did you do yourself any good? See that you're going to have to determine how long do I want to run my refrigerator? Okay, and, and we'll, we'll I'll seal the deal and, and tell you a little bit about that later, about why I built my my solar generators and what I plan on run, running with them. Because there's other factors that you got to keep in mind. When a refrigerator kicks on, it pulls the fullest load current that that it'll have on the nameplate, and uh, so it's not going to pull that whole amount the whole time, but it's going to be kicking on and off, and all these things are going to be draining your battery. So we're going to keep it simple. If you have a 10 amp refrigerator, 12 volt battery on the on the um, battery side of that inverter, that refrigerator pulls 1200 amps, and it that battery has to put out 100 amps. I'm sorry, I said that wrong. That refrigerator pulls 100 watts. Then that battery would have to put out 100 amps. Now, that's the question. How long can that battery put out 100 amps? And that's where amp hours comes in. I can't stress it enough. When you decide on a solar generator, decide what you want to run. We'll talk about that later, a little bit later. And find out the amp hours, the amp hour capacity of that battery on that solar generator and make sure that that is big enough. This is, this is, this is, where the pieces of the puzzle really start coming together for you to make that informed decision. Let me find my, uh, well, I don't know what I did. I got it. Hang on. All right. All right. In a little bit, I'll, I'll take my, I'll unmount my camera and I'll, and I'll get a little close up of these batteries that I have on, on these particular two solar generators, portable solar generators that I built. I have 100 amp hour batteries. That's because I got these solar generators for a specific purpose. And that's what you have to decide based on the information I have here. And hopefully I have, when this is over, I will have equipped you with the knowledge enough to know what you need to research, what you need to find out and just to, to, to be able to get the solar generator that will run for the length of time that you want to run it, whatever you want to run. Okay. It's all going to come together. Y'all hang on. So I've got 100 amp hour batteries for my solar generators. Now let's see what that amp hour means. What it means, it's, it's really your battery capacity. I mean, they're gonna, the battery is 12 volts, but how long will that battery push this current? Okay, and that's what this amp hour is all about. There's a lot of other factors involved with everything that I'm talking to y'all about, but I'm giving y'all the basics, okay, to know. The, the time is not going to be exact, you know, on, on depending on, on your appliance and the heat outside, you know, all there's all kind of different things. So we're doing this on paper, but it's the information you need to know, you know, but, but you know, if I say 12 volts, it might be 12.6 volts. And it might be, if I say 1200 amps, it might be 1206 or 1178, you know, but so we're using nominal standard voltages and numbers and easy numbers. Okay. But but it works, okay? Y'all follow with me. I've got 100 amp hour batteries down here with, with these solar generators that I made. Now, what, what does that amp hour mean? If I have a 100 amp hour battery, that means that battery can push or an appliance can draw 100 amps from that battery for one hour. Or it could draw one amp from that battery for 100 hours. Or it could draw two amps from that battery for 50 hours. But you see, your amps times your amount of hours is going to equal the amp hours. That's all it is. The amp hours is your the amps that that battery is going to push times the amount of hours that it's capable of doing it. So let's look at a 200 amp hour battery. That would be twice the, the capacity of the batteries I have on my solar generators. 
a 200 amp hour battery. That means a 200 amp hour battery could pull or the appliance could draw 200 amps for one hour. Um, I, I said it twice, huh? 200 amps for one hour, or it could draw 100 amps for two hours. You see, or it could draw, let's say, 50 amps for four hours because 50 amps times four hours is 200. Um, how about this one? Four amps. If if a hundred amp, if you have a hundred amp hour battery, and you had an appliance that pulled four amps, like let's say that refrigerator, then four amps, four times what is one hundred? Is that two and a half? I think is that right? <laughs> yeah, I believe it is. So if I have an okay, folks, I, I just made a. I just went through my uh, me and Miss KK to edit this video. And I realized I, I made a, a mistake with my with my mathematics. Don't get scared. It didn't mess nothing up. It, it, this will just help reinforce everything for y'all. Um, I believe you just heard me say. I said four amps times what is one hundred? Is that two point five hours? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I knew something was wrong then. But Mr. E didn't got tired. But. Uh, we're going to straighten that out real quick, and then I'm going to let y'all finish watching what I was saying because it, it'll all make sense. Y'all bear with me. I said uh, 4 amps times what is 100? Is that 2.5 hours? Here's what I was trying to say. Uh, we're talking about the refrigerator that pulls 4 amps. <laughs> if it pulls 4 amps with a 100 amp hour battery... Watch the next part and you'll see what I'm talking about. With a 100 amp hour battery, I could only run that refrigerator for two and a half hours. Then I started spouting off the mathematics because I was getting tired and, and my brain wasn't working right. My brain went ahead of, my, of, of, of what I knew. I knew I could only run it two and a half hours. Let me explain it real simple. Don't let it confuse you. If my refrigerator pulls four amps, see, you got to apply what I already taught you, even though I did my calculation wrong. If my refrigerator pulls four amps, then it uses 480 watts. You see, and it's, it's plugged to that inverter. Because 120 volts times four amps is 480 watts. We already learned all that. That's on the inverter side. And here's why I said I can only get two and a half hours out of my battery. I was right about that, but I, I threw them numbers out there and, and, and did some crazy calculations. Look here. For my battery to put out 480 watts, because remember, the power into the inverter equals the power out of the inverter. For my battery to put out 480 watts, it needs 40 amps to do it, because 12 volts times 40 amps is 480 watts. Okay? So, if my refrigerator pulls 4 amps, it's using 480 watts. My Battery has to put out 40 amps, not four, four amps on the inverter side, 40 amps on the battery side. 12 volts times 40 amps is 480 watts. So if my battery has to put out 40 amps, that's where we get the two and a half hour run time. Remember this? Remember this thing? Look here. I even had wrote this twice earlier, and, I, and I, I corrected it here for you to see. If I have a 100 amp hour battery, which is what I have, that 100 amp hour battery can put push out 100 amps for one hour. It can put out two amps for 50 hours, or it can put out 40 amps for two and a half hours. That's where I get my run time on this side. If I got a, if I have a Four amp refrigerator, that battery needs to put out 40 amps, and it can only put out 40 amps for two and a half hours. That's where I was going with it. I just got tired. I corrected myself right here. I hope it don't mess y'all up. Go ahead and watch the rest of it, this next next little part, and uh, rewind it if you got to. I think that's going to help reinforce it for y'all, though. Thanks, guys. If I have an appliance, let's say it's a refrigerator, and I hook that refrigerator to my solar generator that I have that has a 100 amp hour battery and that refrigerator pulls full 4 amps and remember 
refrigerator pulls typically five, five to ten amps. Um, I've seen some with a little less, and these mini refrigerators pull less. So that's something to think about when you decide what you want. If you want to buy one, build one, or if, or if by now maybe Mr. Eden scared you off. But so if if I have a refrigerator that pulls four amps with my solar generators, I could run that refrigerator for two and a half hours because 2.5 times four amps is 100 amp hours 2.5 hours times 100 amps is 100 amp hours and there you have it folks decide what kind of capacity your solar generator is going to have for what you want to run it see in my case my refrigerators pull more than six, uh, more than uh, four amps. I looked this morning, I think one pulls 6.5. I've seen them pull four, but the ones I've got, is, I think it's around six. So I wouldn't better run my, my, if it was four, like I said, if my refrigerator pulled four amps with what I have, I could run a refrigerator for two and a half hours. Here's the key. Here's what you got to think about. If I ran a four amp refrigerator for two and a half hours on my solar generator, the batteries that I have on these solar generators, 100 amp hour batteries, would be ran down all the way down. And you don't want to run them all the way down with a solar generator. You, you don't want to go all the way down. You want to, you want to use it, but not use it complete, completely, completely up. That's another class. So the max I could get would be two and a half hours. And then my, my battery would be dead. And then I'd have to hook it up to my solar panels and charge it up. And that might take two days. So... Yes, you can run your refrigerator with that, but you might not better run it for very long. I think. Um, so we need to keep in mind the amp hour capacity of your solar generator, what you want to run with it, and, and, and you know, think about, that's all depends on your situation. Is it going to help you to run your refrigerator for two hours once a day because you might have to charge your battery back up after you run it for two hours? And then that's the other thing. The other thing that you need to look at is your solar panel capacity because the bigger the solar panel in surface area, the square footage for all intents and purposes, the faster it will be able to charge your battery. And so if you ran your appliance um, and you ran your battery down, you got to consider how quick you can recharge your battery. So find out the amp hour capacity of whatever solar generator you're getting determine what you want to run off of that solar generator and uh, find out how quick that solar generator can be recharged with whatever solar panels you got with that comes with it. Okay. Um, that's it in a nutshell. I know I threw a lot out at you. Rewind it if you have to. That's it in a nutshell. That's going to work. Find out the amp hours of that solar generator, what you want to run with that solar generator and the how fast you can recharge that battery with that solar generator with the um with the capacity of that solar panel that you're going to have we got one more little segment and i'll show you um what i did what i built real quick and and and, and explain a couple more things about the solar panels and the batteries and and why i built what i built instead of buying one thank y'all all right guys i told y'all that i would uh, show at the end of this video i would show y'all um my um, solar generators that are built, tell you a little bit about them. Um, keep in mind that recharge time, you got to have a big solar panels to uh, charge your battery. You know, the bigger your solar panel surface uh, area, square footage, the quicker you can charge your battery. The bigger your battery power, you know, like if you had a 100 amp versus 200 amp, a 200 amp hour battery will take longer to charge. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, so that's little things to consider. Um, here, here's what we got. Here, here's what my uh, solar generators look like that I built. It's got, it's, they all got your four elements. You got your uh, charger controller, you got your um, your inverter, and you got your your battery. Um, and you can see that's a 100 amp hour battery. This is, this is one that I built that I keep in the outdoor kitchen, and I have a, uh, a portable solar panel that I can charge it with. And uh, this is one that I keep in the house, and um, I've got some solar panels. It's got the same thing. It's got a solar charge controller, 
We've got an inverter and we've got a battery. It's a 100 amp hour battery. And I'll show you that uh, I'd already put it up, but uh, I'll get it back out and I'll show you that portable um, solar charger. It's raining outside, so I can't show you what I got on, on the roof on a little shed, but that, that's not a big deal. Um, I said portable solar charger, portable um, solar panel. So the solar panels, that's not a, a big, big deal. Uh, but the main thing is to know, <laughs> I mean, they are a big deal, but you got to know um, what your battery is going to do. That, that, that's one of the biggest things. The, the bigger your solar panels, the quicker they can charge stuff. All right. Um, and, and I'll tell you this before I show, show you that solar panel, um, that little portable one. The reason I built my uh, solar generators instead of buying a, a, a whole unit, you know, all in, uh, all in one unit is because I can change out my parts, all those, all those four components in, in, in those units that you buy. That's, that's um, already, uh, you know, one solid unit, a portable unit. That's all one, one piece has all four of your components in there. If something goes out, you, you might not be able to change it. If your battery pack goes out or whatever, then it's, it's, it might not be modular and you can't change all that stuff out. So I built mine where I can change out the, the solar panel, the solar uh, panel uh, charge controller, the battery, or the inverter, you know, and not have to do away with the whole unit. So uh, the other thing that I did was make sure that I could, with the way I built mine, I, I didn't, if you notice, some people mount it on a solid wall somewhere. But I got mine where they portal where I can use an actual um, dolly to move them. I got them built where, where you can take a dolly and move these things around. If you see, I got I got a dolly fixed up on this one right now, and uh, you can you can move them around anywhere. Um, so that's that's one reason I built mine like I did, where I can change parts out easy and I can move them around easy. And I told you. Also told everybody, I tell you a little bit about why um, or what I use my solar generators for. I got, I made my solar generators so that if if power goes out, you see, most people that's worried about power going out, they'll have a gas generator, and if power goes out for three days or a week, or maybe even two weeks, you'll have enough gas maybe to run to run all that. But if something real major happens. And we don't have stuff that comes back on for a month or maybe even longer. You might run out of gas and might not be able to get it. Where if you got a good solar generator with good batteries, you know, a battery can last five years. So you can charge those things. And, and you know, if power's out for a while and nobody got light, it, it, it's nice to have light. Um, you know, you, you feel kind of, it's kind of scary if you're in a neighborhood and there's no lights on nowhere. You know, it gets real dark. We're not used to that kind of stuff. So I bought my or, or my parts and made my solar generator. I put them together so that if, if, if the stuff hits the fan, like we talked about, I can have lights because you can run lights, but they don't pull much current. You see, remember all the lessons we gave you? You can run them for days before you have to charge anything. And uh, so it's not going to run down your, your, your battery capacity too much, just running a few lights. And I can also charge up... Um, flashlights you know i got all the little chargers where i can plug into my inverter and charge up all kind of flashlights and, and you can charge up the, or you can run power tools so i put mine together and purchased mine for worst case scenarios where you can have some kind of electricity produced to um charge up your um or to power up your some some small hand hand power tools and, and to be able to have lights. So I wasn't worried about running a refrigerator because I figured if, if it gets real bad, we wouldn't better run a refrigerator too long anyway. You know, so anyway, so that's what we did. Let me go over here and show you this, um, this portable solar panel. All right, guys, I hope y'all can see this. This is just a little a portable. Um, you can go online and get these. This one works real good so, so I can have a portable station. And what it does, this one, um, I'll get a close up here in a minute. Y'all bear with me. This one opens up and uh, it's got some little, so 
custom little um, deals where you can set it up outside. I'm so tired, guys. I can't hardly can't hardly go no more. But we'll get it. All right. And there's your your lines that you hook it up to your to your portable generator. Portable. There we go. There's a portable solar panel. And like I said, you can get some mount on your on your roof, on your shed, whatever works for you. This video was not necessarily about building one or putting one together, but to help you guys stay uh, uh, learn what you need to know to decide what kind of generator to get okay what kind of solar generator to get i hope this video helped you um i know i didn't cover everything but you if you don't know anything about it you have to have a starting point to know what questions to ask what to look for and i hope this video helped you get an idea of the main things that you need to know it's that battery ca uh, cap capacity for that battery um, is one of the biggest, biggest keys and what you want to run with that solar generator. That's the main thing. Guys, if you like this video, um, I'll try to do better on the next one. But if you like this kind of information and you like this video, give us a big thumbs up, uh, like, share, and subscribe. And if you like it, leave, leave comments or if you got questions, leave that in the comment section. I'll help answer them. But if you like it, what Mr. E plans on doing, and let me know if this is a good idea, is I plan on making some videos and we'll maybe make a playlist with uh, electrical tips from Mr. E or something like that to help answer some of y'all's questions. I plan on doing one for people around the farm or the homestead that doesn't really know how to use a voltmeter um, or a multimeter to check power for their battery or their receptacles around the house. So I want to do a simple one in the near future. Let me know if you think that's a good idea to show you guys if you don't know how to how to use a, a, a voltmeter or a multimeter so you can check voltage and power around your house. Uh, let me know if y'all like those ideas, and we'll do some more of these videos. Thank y'all for spending time with us. I hope this helped y'all. That's what it's all about, to help y'all understand this, because I know it's, a hard, it's hard to figure all this stuff out if you don't know what to ask, what to do, what to look for. Let me know if you like it, and uh, we'll get back with y'all next time. Thank you for spending time with us. See y'all. Bye-bye.